hurt others, how can we apologize and make it right with someone when we mess up and lose it and shout? What about when we place negative labels on someone? How can we restore the broken relationship and rebuild trust? You're listening to the Renewed Mama Podcast. I'm Kimberly Mutar, and I help mamas like you stay renewed. As your host, my mission is simple. I help you renew your thoughts that are on repeat while you wash dishes or fold laundry. I help you renew the words you say to yourself and to your children when it's the best day ever and when it spirals into chaos, temper tantrums, and sibling fights. I'm your coach helping you to renew how you respond so that you keep showing up as the mama you want to be. Why do we give negative labels to our children or students? Why do we get into arguments and strife with family members? Why do people annoy us or our children frustrate us? Is it because our children behave in a way that we don't like, we can't control, or we think makes us look like a bad parent? We see something in someone's life, whether it be behavior, choices they are making, paths that they are walking down, or friends they are choosing that we know will hurt them. We don't want that in their life, but we don't know how to change it or how to get them to change it. No matter what we say or do, it feels like we can't get through to this child or this person. We can't change them. Do we give negative labels? Do we get into arguments and strife with family or friends or our kids because they're the total opposite personality to us? We don't see eye to eye. Their thoughts and their opinions are totally out there. It's like they have no common sense. What news source are they listening to? How could they not see it the way we do? (laughs) Have you ever said or felt any of these ways before with your children, your husband, your family members, or your friends? No wonder strife and arguments happen and we hurt people, especially those who are closest to us. I want to share with you some more of Bailey's story. You've been hearing Bailey's story if you've been tuning into the podcast Let's listen to what she has to say about how we can hurt other people with our words. Like Elijah, like he has the ADHD diagnosis. When we were still, when he was still in the school system, and there was a mom of one of his friends recently had said to her son, well, he can't come over to our house. He's unkind and disrespectful and just some other things that were spoken over him. And then, of course, this boy then tells my son well my mom said this about you and it was just like wounds were kind of ripped open a bit because it's like oh my gosh like I totally was that kid but people were like oh you're too this you're too that and just so misunderstood and it's just like looking back I'm like why why did people have such a hard time just being Jesus to me it just honestly it makes me so adamant about showing love to everybody every single person, speaking love over them and life and truth. In my conversation with Bailey that's coming up next, episode 88 on Thursday, she shared something that goes right along with fear. And I just want to share that here because it fits so perfectly. You made the comment, you would wonder, why can't people be Jesus to me? And what would have been being Jesus to you look like for from young Bailey's perspective and as an adult Bailey like tell us we we want to do better for our kids so what does that mean to you why can't people be Jesus to me what are we missing about being Jesus to people I think it depends on who you're talking about um I think that growing up for me personally I think that there was a lot of fear for multiple different reasons I think Fear of, you know, what was she going to do next? Mm, You mean the teacher? (laughs) Yeah, teachers, even parents. Like, I I don't know. I just think that there's a lot of fear when you can't control something. Mm. There's fear. Yeah. Right. 
And even like I look at us as parents now, I shared with you that somebody told their son yeah. <laughs> that my son wasn't welcome in their home, right? I look at that whole thing and there's, it's, it's fear. You can ask, what, why can't people just be Jesus? People are living out of fear. Mm. Fear of, well, what if, what if my kid's exposed to this? Or, or what if this kid does this? It's not Jesus. Mm. I, I don't know. So I like the one, that was the word that just stuck out to me when I read that question was fear. People are just so scared when they can't control something. People are so scared when maybe a, a, a little bit of ungodliness, you know, reaches them or their children, or then they take it a step further. Well, if my kid is exposed to this, then this is going to happen. So they're going to totally turn away from Jesus. But that's not having faith in him, right? Like I look at my life and what I've gone through and the fact that here I am more in love with Jesus than I've ever been in a wonderful marriage, have three beautiful kids. And I did all that despite all of that that happened to me. Right. If you can't say that God is all healing, the ultimate redeemer yeah. of all things, then I... <laughs> I don't know. It, it's not just dumb luck that I am here where I am today. And so I think as parents, as as maybe teachers, as whatever, there's so much fear. But we have to just let God do his thing, right? We can't control everything. And you know what? If your kid is exposed to things that aren't great, great teaching opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then you bring it to God. Only he can work all things for his glory. What Jesus looks like to people or for kids or whatever, is relational, mm. like to be relational, get to know somebody, show them love, like speak to them how Jesus would speak to them, um, encourage them. I think that that's why people have a hard time being Jesus to others. Yes. When it comes to relationship success with our children, our husband, our family members, we need to realize this. We do have different personalities. We do have different viewpoints and life experiences and perspectives, different lenses that we see life through. We can raise multiple children in the same household with the same rules and they still view life or family situations in completely different ways from each other. We cannot control other people. If we did try to control them, well, that's manipulation and communism <laughs> and harmful. We can guide our children and encourage our spouse and family members in a better choice, but we cannot control them and live their life for them. So how do you apologize when you hurt someone? Say, please forgive me for, and then tell them how you hurt them. Say, I take full responsibility for, and then say whatever you took part in that could have hurt your child, your husband, your friend, or your family member. Clearly tell them, this is what I did wrong, or this is what I did that hurt you. This is the pain that I believe I put you through because of what I did. Ask for feedback too. Say, did I identify and understand the pain that you went through? And then let them share. Next, you say, the truth is, and then share something that you like about that person. Then say, I was wrong. Will you forgive me? All together, it could sound like this. Please forgive me, son. I dishonored you when I shouted about cleaning up the Lego. I take full responsibility for hurting you and for passing my frustration on to you. I was wrong to treat you unkindly by shouting at you. Will you forgive me? You can go deeper by asking, how did you feel when I shouted at you? So that you can understand their heart and how they felt. And if there is more there, that needs to be forgiven. Be sure to express your sincere desire and intention to change your behavior and to not bring the same pain into the relationship in the future. And then follow through with diligent effort to make the change. I mean, we're human. It takes intention to change a default response or a habit, but make that effort. You want your words to count to your children and to your husband or a family member. If you don't work to change, you will only disappoint them again and betray their trust in you. 
Isn't this good? I mean, humbling ourselves and asking for forgiveness is the greatest step toward restoring a hurt relationship. How have you seen asking for forgiveness restore a broken relationship in your life? Tell me in the comments. Now, do you want some more great relationship advice? Let me tell you some. Don't attack the other person. Watch your words. If you're about to say, I wouldn't have done it that way, stop. What were you thinking? Stop. Don't say it. Don't attack with your words. How could you be so blind? I mean, can't you see it's obvious that's not the right thing to do or the right way to do it? How could you do that to me? Are you asking me because you genuinely care or are you criticizing me? Do you care enough to even help me? You never. You always. You're such a, and then insert a negative label in there. All of those words attack and hurt. Even in the moment of frustration or annoyance or anger or a misunderstanding, don't attack with your words. Words are not your ammunition. Instead, stop and choose to respond right. Say, to yourself, I will respond right in this. No matter how angry I feel right now, I will do right. I will respond right and choose to honor the other person. Remember to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger because the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. You win when you take all of that hurt energy you feel and put it toward resolving the real problem instead of attacking the person. Try to understand the other person's heart when you're addressing an issue with them. Hear them out fully without interrupting. Ask clarifying questions to learn all of the facts. It can sound like, would you share with me what you were thinking when you did this? Or help me to understand how come you, and then whatever it is. Tell me more about how come you, and then paraphrase what they said to check, to make sure that you understand well. The heart of the righteous ponders how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Also, check your perspective. One of the biggest ways that you can stop negative labels is to change your lenses. See people for their potential, not according to their past or their current mistakes. Understand that we're all on a journey. We're all growing and learning. Your husband may not be where you are yet in your growth journey, and you may not be where your husband is. Your children are children so give grace. You can benefit from their strengths and you can honor them for trying. Look for the gold in them and speak that out over them. Approach your conflict and your strife as an opportunity for you both to grow. The Bible says the Lord's servants must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all, able to teach, patient when wronged, with gentleness, correcting those who are in opposition. Be the first one to step toward reconciliation. If you sense that there's a miscommunication or your guard is up or your husband is defending himself or there's a cold shoulder or silence or offense, call it out in an effort toward reconciliation. Say, I could be totally wrong about this, but I'm sensing that you are upset. Did I say something or do something to hurt you? Go first. You go first to make things right and to end the strife. Be quick to reconcile, refusing to give in to pride and self-righteousness. I like this verse. The beginning of strife is like letting out of water. So I abandon the quarrel before it breaks out. Speak directly to the person first in an effort to reconcile as your conflict is between you and them. If they don't listen, 
that or no reconciliation happens, then take one or two more with you in an effort to resolve the conflict and to restore the relationship. Look for the right time to talk. Be sensitive to the right time to talk so that you can hear each other. You can honor each other. You can come to an agreement. They may, that may mean waiting till the kids are in bed or waiting until they're outside playing for you to be able to talk with your husband. That may mean looking for the right time that you can be alone with your with one child so that all the others aren't listening in as you have a heart-to-heart talk. The Bible says the right word spoken at the right time is as beautiful as good apples in a silver bowl. The warning of a wise person is valuable to someone who will listen. It is worth as much as gold earrings or fine jewelry. So what are the right words you can say? How can I bring this up to my spouse or to my child in a way that they will receive it well and take it to heart? It's not about you having your say or giving them a piece of your mind. It's about helping them to grow and to become better and more mature with deeper character and unity in your home. When you talk with them, do not say harmful things. Just stick to the point Stay away from blaming. Ask, how can I give grace and speak the truth in love here? How can I show kindness? How can I stop the strife that I feel building up and step into God's goodness, his love, his grace, his forgiveness and truth in this situation? Edify them. Say words that help them become stronger. When you're talking with your spouse, say something like, I know you care about me and the children. I'm so grateful for you. I love you. Can we be on the same page about this? For the sake of our family and for unity, can we talk about this? Or what do you think that we can do about this situation? Also watch your nonverbal communication. Use the right tone of voice and the right body language. You can say all the right words, but tell a different story with your tone of voice and your body language. What do you say, mama? Will these relationship suggestions help you? We have all been in moments of miscommunication or said words that we wish after the fact that we could just take back, but we can't. Maybe you have said words fully intending to harm because you were so angry. But it doesn't turn out good, does it? Asking for forgiveness and seeking to reconcile the relationship is the best step to take. If you need any help, Mama, or someone to talk to, go to RenewedMamaCoaching.com. Let's talk through your specific frustrations in your personal life, in your parenting, or in your marriage. And let's look at what you've already tried saying and doing that isn't working. And let's choose what you can try to say instead. I am your Renewed Mama Coach. Go to Renewed Mama Coaching and book your first coaching session now. If you missed any of the other episodes in this six-part series about labeling your children, I encourage you to go back and listen to them all. Episode 83, we first heard Bailey's story about negative labels, the negative labels that hurt her as a child. Episode 84, we talked about positive labels and how they can help or hurt your children. Episode 85, we renewed our mind to what God says about us because as Bailey said, life is miserable living by what others say about you instead of what God says about you. Episode 86, we talked about what you can do if your child is being bullied by a teacher. This is episode 87. And in episode 88, Bailey will share more of her story. It really is a fantastic story conversation. All of the links for these episodes are in the show notes. Just listen away, mama. Did you know that the Renewed Mama podcast is on YouTube and Rumble? So if you like watching an episode instead of just listening in your earbuds, 
If you want to wash dishes or fold laundry with me as you watch me on YouTube or Rumble, do it. Go ahead and find the episode there and be sure to hit the like and subscribe button there so you won't miss out on any new episodes. Thank you for listening to the Renewed Mama podcast. If you know another mama who would be encouraged by this episode, please share it with them. Would you take one minute right now to leave a review for the show on Apple Podcasts? This helps more mamas find the show and be renewed too. Thank you. I appreciate you, mama. I care about you so much. Your mama success, your parenting success, the abundant life you have with your husband and children mean everything to me. I am here for you. For more resources, visit the Renewed Mama podcast, Renewed Mama Coaching, Speak Life Badges, and Austin's Kids Club. If there is one gift that you could give your children today, it would be your words, chosen carefully and spoken well. The words you speak today are like seeds planted in their hearts and minds. These word seeds will sprout and bear fruit in their life as they grow and become adults. Use Speak Life badges, sticker award badges, along with suggested scripts or words you can say in the situations you encounter with your children. These scripts are designed to help you to speak to your child's individual personality, to break lies they may be believing, and to help them to grow up with a truth-filled mindset. Get them today at speaklifebadges.com. Austin the Hedgehog is bringing mailbox fun to your kids. Your children ages 3 to 13 can receive mailbox surprises like activity postcards, happy birthday cards, stickers, crafts, recipe cards, coloring pages, puzzles, special gifts like the I Am Loved journal, a tumbler, Austin's matching happy birthday toque, and so much more from Austin the Hedgehog. Straight to your mailbox with their own name on it each month all teaching life lessons such as helping, using time wisely, how to monitor their own screen time, how to choose the right friends. Being strong means more than just muscles, how to have self-control, and their words are like seeds that will grow into fruit in their life. It is oh so good from Austin the Hedgehog. Two subscription levels are available. Register your children today at austinskidsclub.com.